What's up, everybody? We're here to go over UFC Sao Paulo, Almeida versus Lewis. Um, should be a pretty good card. Looking forward to it. I mean, uh, I do think this might be a bad matchup for Derek Lewis, but he's always got a shot. So, but yeah, so as far as the results from uh, from last week, man, not a whole lot to talk about there. I had one play that hit, one play that didn't hit. So I, I didn't come out with too too much of a loss on that, maybe like a hundred bucks. But um, I had a, I had a, a uh, half unit play on Cameron Saman, um, and that one didn't hit. And then I had, uh, then I had a uh, a two fight parlay. It was supposed to be a two fight parlay with Edgar Chares and Emily Dakoti. And of course, Chares didn't fight, so I only got paid for you know for Emily Dakoti. So yeah, so it didn't have too much going on in that card, man. And if if Chares would have fought, I would have came out you know with some profit, but. Didn't get down too much, you know, maybe, like I said, not maybe a hundred bucks or whatever. It happens sometimes, but there wasn't a whole lot on that card that I found myself, you know, getting excited, excited about betting on, uh, in hindsight, I really wish I had, you know, attacked the, um, I wish I had attacked the, uh, uh, Jonathan Martinez line. Cause that was an amazing price for him. I mean, I had him in my parlays at like plus 100, you know? So, um, if I had just attacked that line, that would have been easy money right there and just, I don't know. Adrian Yanez is good. So, you know, I didn't, um, you know, I did, I was kind of worried about it or whatever, but either way, not too bad. So it did pretty well on the card overall, but as far as the bets, just kind of, you know, broke even there a little bit. But, uh, as far as this card, man, this is going to be a very good card. Really looking forward to this one. And, um, yeah, we've lost some fights on this card, but, you know, Jolton Almeida was supposed to fight Curtis Blades originally. And, uh, uh, Kyle Barallo is supposed to fight uh, North Sultan Rubidizo, R- Ruzabov, Ruzabov. Uh, Daniel Santos is supposed to take on Daniel Marcos. That would have been a good fight. And uh, but yeah, so I mean, still, still good fights on this card. Even though with the opponent changes, it's just a pretty pretty good card all around. It seems like. Um, and as always, man, please like and subscribe. It would really help me out a lot. I really appreciate all you guys for caring what I had to say and for watching and for commenting and liking the videos and everything. And, uh, if you're, if you're new to the channel, what I do is I go through and give out all my picks. And at the end of the video, I give out my bets. I don't charge anybody for my bets. Like some of the other channels, everything's for free. I put all my stuff out there. So y'all know when I do good and you know, when I do bad. So, um, and also this show is available on Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, you know, all that stuff, all the major streaming services. If you're interested in that, I know, uh, I know everybody would rather watch the videos, but just in case you're driving and you and you can't don't want to watch the video, you can check it out on there. And if you do, please give me a you know a, a good rating. It really helped me out a lot too. Um, and as far as uh, you know, if you're not interested in in watching my videos or whatever, you just want to see my picks and my bets, you can go to my social medias. Um, Instagram and TikTok are both high kick underscore fight picks. And then there's a Facebook group on Facebook, High Kick Fight Picks on Facebook, easy to find. And uh, yeah, y'all should really check out that group, man. I mean, there's not a lot of members yet, but there are a few guys in there that post all their bets too. And and they bet differently than I do. You know, they bet the props and stuff like that and the, you know, the round robin parlays and stuff like that. So, you know, you can get a, a, some more ideas of what to bet or tell their bets or whatever, man. It's all, we're all trying to help each other out here, man. We all want to see each other win money, right? So, uh, so do check that out, man. And uh, anyways, so... I guess let's get into this card, guys. First up, we got Daniel Marcos taking on Victor Hugo. And uh, this should be a pretty fun fight, man. I mean, Daniel Marcos is very talented, and Victor Hugo looked pretty pretty amazing on the uh, on the Contender Series. Uh, both of these guys have really good records. So, uh, Daniel Marcos is 30 years old, 5'7", with a 69-inch reach. He is 15-0 and 2-0 and and in the UFC. And um, the, the odds weren't up at the time of me doing my doing my notes, but let me just check it real quick. I'm sure they're up now. Nope, they're still not up. Well, I imagine that I imagine that Marcos will probably wind up being a favorite. It's just how big of a favorite, you know, if it's a if it's a good price when that when that comes around, if he's like a minus, you know, 120, minus 140, um 
that might be interesting line to take, but uh, both these guys' strengths are kind of each other's weaknesses. So uh, where was I at? So Daniel has great kickboxing. I did think that uh, Grant, Davy Grant won the fight in Marco's last fight, but uh, it was a really close fight, man. I think they gave it to Marcos based on damage because Grant was bleeding a little bit or whatever. Uh, Marcos has eight wins by knockout, no wins by submission. He's undefeated. Uh, real nice footwork, uses his jab very well, throws good uh, good front kicks up the middle. Um, has good striking fundamentals. He's very technical. Everything is straight, long punches for the most part. He doesn't get really wild and just wing shots. Uh, cardio checks out pretty well. Um, we haven't seen him up against a high-level grappler yet in the UFC. And uh, his takedown defense has held up so far, though. Um, he lands uh, 4.88 strikes per minute and 70% striking defense with an 89% takedown defense. So those are pretty good numbers. I know it's only based off of two fights in the UFC, but those are pretty good numbers so far. Um, but this is probably going to be, I don't know, Davy Grant's a pretty tough guy, So, but Davy Grant's not really a grappler. So this is going to be a good test for Marcos. Uh, Victor Hugo is 30 years old, 5'7", with a 71.5-inch reach. He is 24-4. and four. And this is going to be his UFC debut. Like I said, the odds weren't up yet. Um, eight wins by knockout, nine wins by submission. Uh, lots of finishes on his record coming off a submission win on the uh, on the Contender Series. And uh, you can tell just by the records who's the more well-rounded fighter here, I would say. Because, you know, Hugo, he specializes in leg lots. You know, a, a lot of a lot of victories due to heel hook and stuff like that. Uh, great double leg takedowns, great jiu-jitsu all around. Uh, throws a lot of spinning stuff on the feet and jumping attacks, which kind of wastes a lot of energy. Uh, throws lots of power shots on the feet, not very technical, but uh, I could see him getting tired due to the way he fights, you know, on, you know, on the feet, you know, he's going to have a one half inch reach advantage here. Uh, Marcos will definitely have the advantage in the striking. He's more technical, more accurate. Um, the grappling definitely goes to Hugo for sure. And and this fight really all comes down to just, you know, can Marcos keep it on the feet and walk Hugo down and keep him backing up, you know, so that uh, Hugo can't shoot for those takedowns and, Marcos has never been submitted. You know, normally my brain would tell me to to go with the better grappler out of the two, uh, but Marcos is undefeated for a reason, you know. And Hugo is fighting at home here, so you got to think about that as well. And this is kind of a tough pick, man. Everybody on Tapology is going with Marcos. Um, I kind of want to pick Hugo, but you know, Marcos has fought the tougher competition, and you know, he has the UFC experience. Um, and I do think that you know if, if the way that Hugo fights on the feet, I do think that would tire him out. If he cannot get Marcos down, um, I think he's going to get pretty tired throwing all those crazy shots and stuff like that. Um, if he doesn't, you know, put Marcos out. So I would say that Marcos is going to have the better cardio here and probably outlast Hugo. Hugo may have some success early, but um, I'm going to take Marcos to win by decision on this one. Next up, we got uh, Cal Fernandez. I hope I'm saying that right. I had worked on it the other day, and then I forgot how to say it. <laughs> Cal, uh, Caillou, Caillou Fernandez. Let's try that. Um, taking on Mark Dia Casey, and uh, we don't have an age on Fernandez on here. I wonder if I. I think I. I guess I didn't get his age off of the other. It, the odds, the uh, the uh, specs on this guy are different everywhere. So I mean, like like LFA has him as as six foot tall, and Tapology has him as five nine. Uh, I, I don't know. So, uh, but anyway, uh, eight and one, this is going to be his UFC debut. Um, he's a plus plus one thirty five underdog, uh, four wins by knockout, two wins by submission. And a, a, like I said, according to the LFA, he's six foot tall with a 72 and a half inch reach, but it doesn't look like that's going to line up with what tapology has. So, um, he beat a guy who was 21 and five in his last fight. You know, a guy who was, uh, fighting out of the fighting nerds camp, a lot of tough guys out of there. So that was a, that was a good victory. Um, great calf kicks, great high kicks. Um, uh, his last fight was a nasty knockout, man, with a head kick, and his kicks are very dangerous. And man, I, it was a tough guy he beat, man. I see why I see why he's getting the shot in the UFC, man. And and the fight before that, he won with a liver kick. So yeah, very dangerous kicks. And so trying to track down tape on this guy, you know, there there are a lot of guys with very similar names to his. So don't do what I did when you're trying to track it down and watch the wrong person before you know 30 minutes before you realize you're watching the wrong guy. Um, couldn't find as many fights as I would have liked. And you know, like I said, there's guys with like one letter difference in their name that, uh, you know, you would think it was him. It's not, um, yeah, he fights with a real, you know, real wide stance, great striking all around. You know, he's very well-rounded. He has dangerous submissions. Um, he has some nice wins, man. I mean, he beat, uh, when he was four and oh, he beat a guy who was nine and one, you know, he's always going to be improvement. He's had a lot of time to prepare for his shot in the UFC. So I expect him to be at his best here. 
And he's taking on Mark Diacasey. He's 30 years old, 5'10 with a 73-inch reach. He is 16-7 and seven and 7-7 seven and seven in the UFC. And he's a minus-175 favorite. And, uh, you know, he's got six wins by knockout, one win by submission. Um, he had a brief bit, bit of success where he fought a couple of guys that couldn't wrestle and didn't have good takedown defense, so he was able to exploit that. Uh, but now he's back on a two-fight losing streak. You know, two tough guys, though, nonetheless. But, uh, you know, Mark has decent striking, big power, throws a lot of spin attacks and big shots. Um, hasn't looked quite as good as early in his career, you know, um, um, you know, with his striking and uh, lately, uh, you know, he got out volumed in his last two fights. And I honestly, I would, I wouldn't say he has really good wrestling. I would just say more so he can get guys down than have bad takedown defense. Um, you know, I don't think his wrestling would, would stand up to some of the good wrestlers in the division, you know, um, if that makes sense. Uh, he's a UFC veteran, lots of experience, but I'm not seeing much here to, to, you know, much here to like to lead me to believe that he should be this big of a favorite. Um, I actually, I actually think Fernandez has the cleaner, more technical striking on the feet, and I think Mark will have to try and get Fernandez down here to get a win and hold him down. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go with the underdog here, man, and take Fernandez. Um, he's a younger guy on his way up, and you know, Dia Casey's kind of hard to put away. Um, I guess he has been finished before, but I I think I'll go with Fernandez to win by decision just because Dia Casey's, you know, pretty tough. Unless unless Fernandez grabs a submission. Uh there's definitely a possibility there. And if that's the case, I would say he probably gets a late submission, third round. Uh, but I'll say by decision. Next up we got Lucas Alexander taking on David Onama. And this should be a very good fight. Uh while it lasts. So uh, Lucas Alexander is 28 years old, 5'11", with a 73-inch reach. He is 8-3 and three and 1-1 one and one in the UFC, and he's a plus-175 underdog. Uh, he made his debut uh, against Joe Henderson Brito and, and got finished, but Brito is a really bad dude, man. No shame there. Uh, but in his next fight, he looked amazing as an underdog against Steven Peterson. Um, his striking looked amazing. Great kicks to the legs and to the body. Threw a ton of them. Uh, very fast hands. Hits very hard. Three wins by knockout. No wins by submission. Um, all of his losses have been by submission, though, so that's something to think about there. So obviously, that's the weak part of his game, you know, submission defense. Um, he fights out of both stances very well, very good counter striking, throws great combinations, uh, mixes up his attacks very well, man. You know, to the head and the body and everything, and he lands uh, five five point five strikes per minute with a sixty seven percent takedown defense. And I actually do think that Lucas is the better, you know, cleaner striker here, and probably has a speed advantage. Um, and he probably has the cardio advantage too, if we're going based off, you know, some of Anama's old fights. So even though I said all these nice things about, you know, Alexander striking, we also have to remember that his last fight was against Steven Peterson, a guy who was retiring after that fight. So, uh, maybe a guy whose heart wasn't really completely in it, you know, at that point or, or whatever. And, and at the end of his career. So, um, he did look great though, but you got to keep, you know, got to consider that whenever you're thinking about putting money on him here. Um, and he's taking on David Onama. He is. 29 years old, uh, 5'11 with a 74 inch reach. He is 11 and 2 and 3 and 2 in the UFC. He's a minus 220 favorite. And yeah, this guy has all the skills, man. He looks amazing at times, but you know sometimes his cardio lets him down. Um, if he didn't get the fight over early or you know whatever, but all of his wins have been by finish. Seven knockouts, four submissions. Um, he has never been finished himself. He's only lost by decision. Um, he's gonna have a one inch reach advantage. And even though I said Lucas has the better striking, Onama, I think, will have the power advantage. Um, he's the better wrestler and, you know, the better grappler out of these two for sure. So, you know, he is more well-rounded, good submission defense. And even though he got rocked a few times in his last fight, he looked a lot better as far as the cardio goes um, against, uh, who was that, uh, Gabriel Santos, who's very tough. Um, you know, he's at a new gym. He's training at altitude now, so he's really working on that. Um you know, he did lose the first round before he got the knockout in his last fight. I will say that he was, you know, he was kind of losing that fight, but either way, he was also in a good shots, man. Um, you know, it wasn't a bad performance, you know, totally. Um, I'm always scared and not confident when it comes to, to Onama, man. He needs to work on his head movement. He keeps his head like right on the center line too much. Uh, so therefore he does eat a lot of shots. Um, he has really good elbows from top position. You know, he's pretty good at reversing if he gets taken down and ended up on top. Um, he kind of came on late in, in his last fight, which isn't what we're used to seeing from him. Usually he goes hard early and then, you know, dies off, you know, after the second round or whatever. But um, I think if he fights a smart game plan, he could win this fight with his wrestling. Um, I probably won't have any serious money on it, man. I kind of want to pick Alexander just because, you know, Onama's cardio in the past. But uh, I'm going to be going with Onama here to win, and I'm going to take him to win by submission round two. 
Uh, but like I said, not not any super serious money on it. Just maybe in my one of my big parlays or something. So next up, we got Maserat uh, Ruiz taking on Eduarda Mora. Apologize if you can hear my dog barking. <clears throat> so uh, Ruiz is thirty years old, five foot tall, with a sixty one inch reach. She is ten and three. And one and two in the UFC, and she's a plus 300 underdog. Uh, two wins by knockout, three wins by submission. You know, she was known for her wrestling on the regional scene, but and her striking isn't very good because she's always at such a big height and reach disadvantage. Uh, she's way smaller than most of the people in the division. Uh, she belongs in a smaller weight class, just unfortunately there's not one in the UFC. Um, aside from, you know, uh, landing the same headlock takedown over and over in her debut, she hasn't really looked good in the UFC. Um, I want to see her win just because she has a Captain Spaulding tattoo, and that's one of my favorite characters, but um, can't pick her just because of that. So, I mean, unfortunately, there's not a lot that I'm going to be able to say for her in this spot. Um, I do understand why she is such a big underdog here. And she's taken on Edra, Eduardo Mora. She is 29 years old, uh, 29 years old, 5'6", with a 60, basically 70-inch reach. Um, you know, yeah, 70-inch reach, or sorry, 67-inch reach, my bad. Um, she is nine and oh, and this is going to be her UFC debut. She's a minus 400 favorite, uh, three wins by knockout, five wins by submission. So, you know, all but one of her wins have been by finish. She is going to have a six inch, uh, six inches of height and six inches of reach advantage in this fight. Uh, she trains with Jolton Almeida. So, you know, she's at a good camp. Um, she's very good everywhere, man, but she does her best work on the ground. Um, her, her hands seem to be, to be good as well, though. I mean, from what I've seen, uh, great double legs, good trip takedowns, dangerous ground and pound. Uh, she's very strong and powerful. She likes to put her knee between the legs of her opponents on the ground. And it's like she flips, kind of keeps them partially on their side. I, can, I don't know if I can explain it correctly, what I'm talking about. Um, the way she does it, it almost makes it impossible for the person on bottom to get a good position. You know, turn one way or turn the other because um, she keeps one of the legs. Either way, I'm, I'm doing a bad job of explaining what I'm talking about. But uh, it makes it easier for, getting to, for her to get in side control as well. So, you know, there's no good way for her opponent to do anything from that position. Um, I believe she was doing that on the Contender Series fight, or it could have been the one before that. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, from what I can tell, man, she's going to destroy you, you know, Ruiz badly here, and I'm going to take her to win by submission round one. Um, I mean, Ruiz did just get submitted in her last fight, did she not? Oh no, that was a finish. Uh, but yeah, I'll take uh, Mora to win by to win by submission. Next up, we got Angie Hill taking on Denise Gomes. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to grab some water. So, um, Angela Hill is 38 years old, 5'3", with a 64 and a half inch reach. She is 15 and 13, and 10 and 13 in the UFC, and she's a plus 120 underdog. And yeah, you know, just looking at the numbers on her record, it doesn't do her justice, her career justice. She's fought all the tough fighters, man. She's had good fights. You know, she arguably won the Amanda Lemos fight. Uh, even Dana White said she won that fight, so... You know, she she is very experienced and very good at what she does. And she's one of my favorite fighters, man. She's really good Muay Thai striking, very experienced. Um, uh, she has a win over Lupita Godinez, who's on a roll right now. Um, Hill is good in the clinch with her elbows and knees. She has five wins by knockout. Uh, never won a fight by submission. She has been working on her ground game a lot, though. Um, she's never been knocked out. She can push a tough pace. And I thought she won the Lamos fight, like I said. Uh, it was a good performance on her behalf. I'm not sure how they gave that to Lamos. Um, Hill's weaknesses have always been her takedown defense and it's improved quite a bit, man. She's been working on it. Um, you know, Gomes is more of a power puncher striker. So this fight may play out on the feet. I'm pretty sure unless Angela decides to, to go for the wrestling. Um, she does throw a lot of volume and I'm, I'm tempted to pick her here cause she's never been knocked out and that's how Gomes has been winning fights. Um, this is the kind of fight that Hill could pull out the win in my opinion. We've seen her do crazier stuff, you know, um, she's going to have a one and a half inch reach advantage. Um, and she's taking on Denise Gomes. She's 23 years old. Uh, five two with a sixty three inch reach. Uh, she is eight and two and two and one in the UFC, and she's a minus one forty five favorite. And yeah, I'm pretty surprised that Gomes isn't a huge favorite here after you know already after a win over Yasmin Uruguay. That was that no one thought she was going to win that fight. Um, everybody's high on Uruguay. Um, she's on a two fight knockout streak. You know she's going to have the power advantage in this fight, but I don't think she's going to have the striking advantage in my opinion. Just the power. Um, you know Hill may Hill may be the more technical you know skilled fighter. But it's hard to pick against the power of Gomes. Um, I think Hill will land a lot of shots, um, but Gomes will land the more meaningful shots and cause more damage. 
Um, I'm going to take Gomes to win by decision, you know, since Hill has never been knocked out. But um, I might have a little a little something on Hill just in case, you know, because uh, I don't I don't think I'll put I don't think I'll put Gomes in my in my parlays, but maybe I'll I'll have just a little bit of you know underdog money on Hill separate because I don't like betting against uh, Angela Hill because she's one of my favorites. So next up we got. Elizu Zaleski taking on Renat Fakhradinov. <clears throat> so, Zaleski is 36 years old, almost 37, uh, 5'11 with a 73 inch reach. He is 24 and 7 and 10 and 3 in the UFC, and he's a plus 200 underdog. Uh, this guy's very tough, man. He's a great striker. You know, this is the guy who beat the hell out of uh, Benoit St. Denis. Um, 14 wins by knockout, 3 wins by submission. Uh, just hasn't been fighting very often, man. He's had two fights in the last three years. This will be his third. Um, you know, his last win was a split decision over Abubakar and Namagomedov. Um, he definitely did more damage there, but it was a close fight. Um, you know, he has amazing spinning attacks, spinning hook kicks, and flying knees. Um, he's had some real cool knockouts in the UFC. You know, at one point, this guy was on a seven-fight, you know, win streak in the UFC, and he knocked out Sean Strickland with a hook kick. So, very impressive. In case everybody forgot, you know, he's he's the real deal. Um, he has pretty good takedown defense, man. Started with, uh, Capoeira back in the day. You could tell he has that background with his kicks. Um, he's had a pretty good career in the UFC, man. And no doubt he's better on the feet here, probably more technical. Um, he lands, you know, 4.48 strikes per minute, uh, 66% takedown defense with 58% striking defense, uh, which isn't, isn't all that good on the striking defense, but it happens, you know, people get caught, whatever. But, um, I guess, man, if, if he could keep it on the feet, he could possibly win this fight. Um, I know he just beat Abubakar, but that guy is not anywhere near as good as Fakhradinov is, unfortunately, for him. But, um, yeah, I think this is a completely different animal he's taking on here in Fakhradinov. So. Um, and Renat is 32, 32 years old, 6 foot tall with a 74 inch reach. He's 22 and 2 and 3 and 0 in the UFC. He's a minus 250 favorite. Um, 11 wins by knockout, 7 wins by submission. Really well rounded. Uh, you know, great wrestling, pushes a really tough pace. Um, he has, hasn't had trouble at all in the UFC yet, man. Kevin Lee was supposed to be his big test and he got him out of there. Like it was nothing, uh, choked him unconscious. Um, his striking is pretty good, man, as well. He does kind of throw wild shots, a lot of power shots, um, really hard jabs and big hooks and nasty. It's got a nasty straight right hand for sure. Um, his best weapons are his pressure, his pace and his wrestling, uh, dangerous submissions, nasty guillotine. Um, he's going to have a one inch reach advantage here. And uh, he's staying busy, man. He's way more active. And even though Zaleski might be the more technical striker, that doesn't really do him any good if he can't, uh, if he can't, if if Renat is making uh, Zaleski fight his type of fight, it's not going to do Zaleski any good to be the more technical striker. So um, he's going to be forcing him to back up and defend constantly. So I think Renat is going to wear on him and eventually find a submission here, you know, probably after landing a big shot. So I'm going to take Renat to win by second round submission. Next up, we got. <laughs> next up, we got Els Brenner taking on Esteban Ribovix. <clears throat> I'm curious to see if uh, if anybody agrees with me on this fight. Um, a lot of people are probably gonna think I'm stupid or whatever, but uh, Brenner is 15 and three. Um, oh wait, five ten with a 72 inch reach. Uh, 15 and three and two and zero oh in the UFC. He's a minus 185 favorite, and. Uh, I'm probably going to catch a lot of hate on this, but man, I, I can't stand this guy. And I know, I think me and most people thought that he lost the uh, two golf fight. Um, I thought he pre pre uh, pretty clearly lost that fight. Sorry, I can't talk. Um, and, you know, he clearly, he clearly shouldn't have won that fight, in my opinion. And, you know, I don't know what was wrong with Guram Kudalice, you know, in, in, in their fight, but um, he took that fight on short notice and he just didn't look like himself. I mean, he did win like the first two rounds, I believe. But uh, his cardio was terrible. I mean, I don't know what was going on with Guru on there. Maybe it was just a short notice, but um, he was gassed out, man, And and uh, which isn't like Kudalite at all. I mean, he's usually so good. You know, he shouldn't have been losing to this guy. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm chalking it up to short notice, man, because I just, I haven't seen anything much from Brenner to lead me to, to think that he's, that he's that all, all that good. Um, I know he beat Guram, but like I said, uh, that was, that didn't look like Guram he was fighting. I don't know if it's just me, if anybody else feels that way, but, um, you know, he does have some power, man. He keeps coming no matter what. He doesn't get tired. 
Um, he has a loss to Gabriel Santos on his record, who we just saw get knocked out by David Onama. Um, man, you know, Brenner, Brenner's never been finished. He has two wins by knockout, 11 wins by submission. Um, you know, which is what he was known for on the region, on the regional scene as jujitsu. Um, but you know, in the UFC, everybody's good at grappling and has great takedown defense. So he's been forced to, to kind of be on the feet for the most part. And I mean, I guess the striking hasn't looked terrible. Just, I mean, I, I don't know. I just didn't see much to lead me to believe, you know, that, uh, that he's all that great, man. I don't know, but maybe it's just me. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, he's going to have a three inch reach advantage here. So he does have that going for him. Um, he's taken on Esteban Ribovix. He is 27 years old, 5'10", with a 69-inch reach. He is 12-1 and one and 1-1 one and one in the UFC, and he's a plus-160 favorite. And he made his debut up against a, a guy twice his size and got out-wrestled a little bit, but he had his moments in that fight for sure. He hurt that guy several times um, on the feet. And, uh, you know, in his next fight, he looked great. You know, he made a lot of improvements. He had trouble with his takedown defense a little bit, you know, in the in the first round. Um but, uh, you know, he's only lost one time and you know, the, the first round of his last fight, he got taken down, like I said, and, and held down the whole round. But after that, no issues, um, didn't get taken down again. I um, mean, he has very slick striking, uh, very fast, uh, very fast hands. Those good combinations, uh, dangerous in the pocket. And he picks up the pace more and more as the fight goes on. You know, he goes harder in the third round than he did in the first. So you always want to see that he has six wins by knockout, five wins by submission, um, you know, he was landing like eight punch combinations on, on Camilla Kirk in the, in the second round, you know, he dropped him twice. Uh, it was very, very impressive on the feet. Um, he checks kicks very well. Um, you know, he's, he's only going to get better, man. He's real young, you know, and he's going to be the, the better fighter on the feet here, more powerful. Um, he goes to the body a lot with his punches, has a nasty uppercut. And, you know, if, if, um, if Ribovics can keep it on the feet, he's got this. And the reason I'm going with Ribovics here is that, you know, Els Brenner has 20% takedown accuracy in the UFC, so um, not very good with his takedowns. Um, and Ribovix is, is you know, going to be the, the better striker, and Ribovix lands uh, 6.16 strikes per minute, which is pretty good. And, and I'll take Ribovix to win by decision, um, but I do hope he wins by knockout. Um, I'm going to take the underdog shot here on, on Ribovix. Sorry, guys, my voice gets kind of messed up after talking for 30 minutes straight nonstop. <laughs> I'll start taking a break in the middle of my videos. <clears throat> I hope the sound's all right. Um, next up, we got Vitor Petrino taking on Modestus Bukakis. Uh, Petrino is 26 years old, 6'2", with a 77-inch reach. He is 9-0 and and 2-0 and in the UFC. He's a minus 275 favorite. And, uh, yeah, this guy's very physically gifted, man. He's so big and strong that he can kind of easily throw guys around. Um, his striking isn't all that good, but he's just kind of wild and very powerful, man. Just throws big shots. But, you know, there, if he lands, you know, he puts it, puts you away, man. He has six wins by knockout. Um, just cause he's so powerful, man. Uh, you know, it's, it's scary. So, you know, but honestly in, in, a, in his last fight, you know, he had to use his grappling cause he was, you know, losing on the feet to Pracnial in my opinion. Um, but he did good, did what he had to do, did good, got the submission. Um, he's been doing mostly grappling in the UFC, actually, you know, he's done pretty well. Um, he's still developing. He's a young guy. He's constantly improving. Uh, you know, once he really gets his technique down on the striking, he's going to be unstoppable probably, uh, with his kind of power. But, you know, the UFC is doing a good job of building him up here and giving him good fights. So, you know, he's, he's just so strong and, and the people can't control him on the ground, man. He can just get up or just throw you over or whatever, man. So, um, you know, his, his last win was his first submission win ever. Um, he's going to be more, he's going to be the more powerful guy here, but I do think that if he doesn't land a big shot early, he's going to want to use his grappling here again. Um, uh, Modestus is a very good striker. So, and, uh, Modestus is 29 years old, six, three with a 78 inch reach. Um, he is 15 and five and three and three in the UFC. He's a plus plus two twelve underdog. <clears throat> so, um, this is his second run in the UFC, man. And, and since he came back, um, he's two and zero, oh. and during that time that he was cut from the UFC before the uh, Tyson Pedro fight, he went and won the uh, Cage Warriors light heavyweight title. Um, he stands real heavy on his lead leg, which can make him available for leg kicks. Um, but he seems to have tightened a lot of things up, you know, between his last stint in the UFC and this one. Uh, doing my research, I could see why the UFC signed him in the first place. You know, before the UFC, he had ten ten wins by finish, which was almost all of his wins at that point. Um. He has big power in his hands. I noticed that he's been throwing a lot more kicks and switching stances a lot more than he used to. And uh, he mainly beat Tyson Pedro with his superior conditioning. You know, Pedro was really tired and he just kind of outlasted him. 
Um, he's very fast for a big guy. You know, his head movement looks pretty good. You know, it's way more improved, you know, since, uh, in his last few fights, um, he's going to have a one inch reach advantage. Um, he also, he's also, you know, a young guy himself, you know, constantly improving, man. He's been making, making improvements. So I expect him to look better. Um, he has a nasty straight right hand. He, he's good at landing shots as he's backing away too. very good counter striking. Um, and as he moves off to the side, you know, he never ba backs up straight in, in a straight line, you know, so, uh, um, he's very good at countering off the, off the, uh, off the circling. And, uh, he did get taken down in his last fight in the first round. But, you know, I do think that if Paga could take him down, Vitor will definitely be able to as well. Um, if it's not going Vitor's way on the feet, I think he has that option here. And I'm going to be taking Petrino to win by decision or maybe a late submission. Um, but I would not be surprised if, uh, if, uh, Modestus pulls off an upset here, but uh, I'm going to be taking Petrino for sure. Next up, we got Kyle Baralo taking on Abus Magomedov. <laughs> and uh, so uh, Baralo is 30 years old, 6'1", with a 75-inch reach. He is 14-1 and and 4-0 and in the UFC. And he's a minus 360 favorite. And, uh, you know, this guy has some legit explosive wrestling, you know, great takedowns. He's very explosive, man, on the feet as well. Um, has has gotten pretty much all everyone he's fought down uh, in the UFC so far. And he's been fighting a lot of real tough guys too, man. Uh, not any easy fights for this guy yet. Uh, great pe pressure and cardio, four wins by knockout, four wins by submission, uses a lot of feints to set up his strikes. Um, great flying knees. He was throwing a lot of those in his last fight. Um, great jujitsu, man. Really good at transitioning to the backup against the cage. You know, he averages 2.59 uh, takedowns per minute, or sorry, per 15 fights, not per minute. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um, and with a 67% takedown accuracy, um, his striking has really been improving as well, man. He was landing a lot of nasty calf kicks in his last fight. Um, you know, once he gets guys on the ground, he's very good at advancing position and, and using his ground and pound to set up his submissions and, and, uh, you know, very great, very good top pressure. He doesn't give guys a lot of space, you know, to get up, um, coming off his first finish win in the UFC and he's going to be fired up. He's going to be looking for a finish and this is a good matchup for him considering how, um, how Abus, you know, looked in his last fight. So, um, Avis is 33 years old. He's 6'2 with a 78 inch reach. He is 25, 5, and 1, and 1 and 1 in the UFC, and he's a plus 295 underdog. And yeah, this guy has had a great career in MMA before, you know, the UFC. He went 3 and 1 in the PFL. Um, I believe he had a kickboxing background as well. Um, hits very hard. He's a great striker. Tons of first and second round finishes on his record. Uh, 14 wins by knockout, 6 wins by submission. He's going to have a 3 inch reach advantage in this fight. And uh, he will be the better, more powerful striker here, probably out of these two, but. You know, we saw in his last fight that his cardio is just terrible, man. And, you know, he was gassed in the first round. And uh, if he hasn't fixed that cardio situation, there's no way that he will win this fight. Um, he has all the skills. He's good everywhere. But with no gas tank, you know, Kyle will definitely wear on him and get him down. Um, he does land 5.60 uh, strikes per minute. and um, But, you know, that's just because of a... Uh, uh, because of the, you know, the Sean Strickland beatdown, it says he absorbs over eight strikes per minute, so that's not good. But uh, And the UFC did kind of push him to the top, you know, for no reason, really, you know, way too soon, because uh, he he didn't earn it, man. And in the in the middle... Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, which is probably the reason that Sean made him, you know, look like he didn't belong, man. He throws great, uh, great front kicks up the middle. He has great technique uh, in his kickboxing. He does have uh, 15 first round finishes, so there's always a chance he could land a big shot. Uh, but based on what we saw in his last fight, man, I definitely got to go with Barallo here to win. I think he's going to wear on him. He's going to gas him out. He's going to get him down. He's going to get a submission. Uh, and I'll say, I'll say submission round two, man. Unless Abus's cardio has improved, then it's submission round three. But whatever, I say Barallo gets a finish here. Next up, we got Ismail Bonfin taking on Vince Bichel. And uh, Ismail is 27 years old, 5'8", with a 71-inch reach. He is 19-4 and 1-1 and one and one in the UFC, and he's a minus 450 favorite. And, uh, man, I find it ridiculous that he's this big of a favorite after how he looked in his last fight. Um, and he was on a 13-fight win streak before his last fight. He made Terrence McKinney look like, you know, made it look easy against him. Um, he has, he's very well rounded, nine knockouts, four submissions on his record. But, you know, there is something that I didn't realize going into his last fight that all of his losses have been by submission, all four of them. So that's definitely the weak part of his game, submission defense. Um, he is very explosive and he's very athletic as well. Very athletic striker, um, throws a lot of big looping shots, uh, great knees, fights very aggressively. 
Um, he's very good, man, but he didn't look good at all at, against St. Denis. So, I mean, um, and he's fighting a UFC veteran here who's been around a long time and has only lost three times, man. You know, pichel has been around a long time, so he's got a pretty good record. Um, so he has his work cut out for him here, man. And I, I don't know that I agree with this big, big line on him, but, uh, he's taken on, uh, Vince Pichel. He's 40 years old, almost 41, uh, five ten with a 72 inch reach. Uh, he's going to have a one inch reach advantage. He is 14 and three and seven and three in the UFC. And he's a plus three thirty underdog. And yeah, he's only lost to real tough guys, man. And I, I actually thought he won the Mark Matson fight cause he did more damage, but I mean, whatever they, I guess they gave it to Matson based on the control time, but, um, He's got eight wins by knockout, no wins by submission. He's going to have a one-inch reach advantage. Nick already said that. Um, very heavy kicks, man. Always comes in in great shape. Fights with his hands kind of low at times, so you don't see the strikes coming from down there. Um, you know, this is a, a very tough guy, man. He, he's not really the wrestling type. He likes to strike. But, I mean, maybe he maybe he will look to use the wrestling in this fight. Uh, you know, he's almost... He's over 40 years old, man, and has a reasonably good record for being in the UFC and... You know, he switches stances really well. He does it. He does like stance switches, like mid combo, you know, co mid combination, you know, stance switches, nice footwork. Um, I actually find myself being a fan of Pichel. You know, sometimes you forget about him because he doesn't fight as often as other guys. Um, yeah, this should be a very fun fight. You know, um, you know, Ishmael should probably win this fight. He's a younger guy. He's got more going for him. And I wouldn't be surprised though, if Pichel landed a big shot in each round and won a decision or something. But, uh, I kind of want to pick Bichel just because Bonfin is such a big favorite, and I feel like he shouldn't be. But um, I'm going to go with Bonfin. Uh, I'm going to say the forward pressure of of Bonfin will wear on on Pichel, and and I'll take uh, I'll take Bonfin to win by decision, man, because Vince is very tough. Next up, we got Rodolfo Vieira taking on Armand Petrosian. And Vieira is 34 years old. He's six foot tall with a 73 inch reach. He is nine and two and four and two in the UFC. And he's a minus 104 slide underdog. Um, he's primarily known for his jujitsu, man. It's world class. Um, had shown some bad cardio in the past, but he seems to have pr improved that a lot. Uh, looking back on his record, I don't see any wins that stand out to me as great wins. Um, he has 100% takedown defense, but Armand is a kickboxer. He won't be looking for takedowns. Uh, Vera has worked on his boxing, man. It seemed a lot better than it used to be, but he, he stands no chance against Armand on the feet here. Um, he is a seven time, you know, jujitsu champion, world champion, eight wins by submission, one win by knockout. And he actually struggled quite a bit against Cody Brundage in the last fight, got beat up through most of the uh, first round, which isn't a very good look based on, you know, what Brundage has done since. And, uh, he's definitely gonna have the grappling advantage in this fight, but honestly, honestly, he doesn't have the best takedowns. Um, they're more the jujitsu type of takedowns rather than the wrestling type takedowns. And he's not, not very accurate really with them. Um, he usually only gets the takedowns when guys are very gassed out. So, um, but he will have a two inch reach advantage in this fight as well. I don't know if I mentioned that already. And he's taken on Armand Petrosian. He is 33 years old, six, three with a 71 inch reach. He is eight and two and three and one in the UFC. And he's a minus minus one twenty favorite. <clears throat> yeah. This guy's a, he's an amazing kickboxer, man. Five wins by knockout. Uh, no wins or losses by submission, uh, no finishes in the UFC yet, but he does hurt guys, you know, in, in all of his fights. Um, the Gregory Rodriguez fight was insane. That was a war and it was a crazy fight. Um, I've been a fan of this guy since his fight of the contender series, man. He's very good. He's very tall and rangy, moves in and out of the pocket very well. I'm um, really good at setting up his strikes, very good counter striking. Um, even though he has, you know, more success, uh, when he's, you know, when he's the one pushing forward and walking guys down, he does, he does counter very well as well. Um, he's pretty good at getting back back to his feet if he's taken down. Um, lands over five strikes per minute. Great kicks to the body. Um, he's hurt a lot of guys with those, man. Nasty right hand. Uh, great great takedowns. Um, not great takedowns. What am I saying? <laughs> I was looking at something else. Um, you know, and, and he's looked very good, man. And, and I know these guys' strengths are kind of each other's weaknesses, you know, but the reason I feel um, so strongly uh, that Petrosian will win this fight is, you know, Vieira has 26% takedown accuracy. Um, yeah, that's where I got the, uh, great takedown. If it's right, I don't know what I was looking at. Um, but yeah, Vera has 26% takedown accuracy. So his takedowns aren't that good. And I'm going to be taking Petrosian to win my knockout here. Um, I think he's going to finally get a finish here, man. Uh, you know, Vera is not going to, if Vera can't get it down to the ground, he's screwed, you know? So, uh, yeah, I'll take Petrosian to win my knockout. Let's say round two.
Next up, we got Rodrigo Nascimento taking on Dante Mays. Who cares, right? Like, this is actually the second time these guys fought, so, like, really, why are we doing this again? <laughs> you know? Um, Nascimento is 30 years old, 6'2", with 80-inch reach. He is 10-1 um, and one and 3-1 and one in the UFC, and he's a minus-225 favorite. And, uh... Yeah, this guy is known for his grappling, you know, great submissions. He has six wins by submission, two wins by knockout. Um, the guys that, uh, that he's fought, but um, these guys fought before and Rodrigo won by submission. Um, Rodrigo has shown in the UFC he can strike well, you know, as well he can strike. And um, he has great trips, good single legs and judo throws, very explosive for a big guy, throws good combinations. Um, 75% takedown defense, 42% takedown accuracy. Um, I do believe he's better everywhere the fight goes here. I, I don't, I don't understand why he's even fighting Dante Mays. Um, yeah, I, I don't get it, but, uh, yeah. So Mays is 31 years old, six, six with an 81 inch reach, one inch reach advantage, uh, 10 and five and three and three in the UFC. And he's a plus plus one eighty underdog. Um, you know, let's face it, man. Mays isn't very good. Hasn't had any impressive wins in the UFC. Um, he beat Andre Avlosky, but Arlovsky should have retired, you know, 10 years ago. Um, maybe not 10, maybe five years ago. Um, you know, but, but back in the day, Mays would have gotten destroyed by Arlovsky. Let's, you know, this guy it isn't very good. Um, I don't have anything to say for Mays here in this spot. I, I'm taking Rodrigo to win by submission again. Uh, I'll take him to win by submission in round two. Uh, I just don't understand why they're, you got a guy who's three and one and, you know, he's taken on Mays, who is three and three in the UFC. I, I don't get it. You know, Mays just lost one fight ago. So, and he lost to Augusto Sakai. So, <laughs> uh, next up, we got the co main event uh, Gabriel Bonfin versus Nicholas Dalby. <clears throat> Voice is going away. <clears throat> so, um, Gabriel Bonfin is 26 years old. Uh, six one with a seventy two inch reach. He is fifteen and zero and two and zero in the UFC, and he's a minus three seventy five favorite. And yeah, this guy's the real deal, man. Great wrestling and jujitsu. Has twelve wins by submission, three wins by knockout. Um, all of his wins have been by finish. Um, he's fought some really tough guys, man, and made it look easy. And I wouldn't say he's a very technical striker, just kind of very powerful. Kind of throws wild on the feet. Um, but once he gets a hold of you, it's over, man. And I can't say enough good things about his grappling. Um, he stays moving forward. You know, he's really fast hands, very strong in the clinch, great body lock takedowns, nasty guillotine, um, 100% takedown accuracy, 100% takedown defense, man. You know, it's very impressive. Uh, lands over six strikes per minute. You know, he's, he's better everywhere um, here, and he's younger. You know, um, but this is going to be a good test for him, though, for sure. And uh, Nicholas Dalby is 38 years old, almost 39 now. He's 5'11 with a 74 and a half inch reach. He is 22-4-1 and one, and 6-3-1 and one in the UFC, and he's a plus-280 underdog. Yeah, Dalby's pretty good, man. He finds a way to win fights, man. You know, he's, his best weapon is his cardio, really. He kind of, like, outlasts guys like he did in the Muslim Salikov fight. Um, that's kind of how he often wins fights like that, by outlasting his opponents. He's, he's very well-rounded. Um, aside from the Muslim Salikov wins, not or win, not the best wins in the UFC, but, you know, has a, has a good record for a 38-year-old guy in the UFC, man. So, you know... Um, but uh, the only way I think he wins this fight is if Bonfim gasses out after the first round. But I don't really think that's going to happen. I'm going to be taking Bonfim to win by submission. Um, take him by submission, and he usually gets it done in the first round. So let's go with round one. Uh, but Dolby is a very tough guy, man, and he's very experienced. So who knows? Next up, we got the main event. Jolton Almeida taking on Derek Lewis. Unfortunately, because uh, I hate seeing my guy Derek Lewis, you know, get beat. <laughs> so, Jolton Almeida is 32 years old. He is 6'3 with a 79 inch reach. He is 19 and 2 and 5 and 0 in the UFC, and he's a minus 500 favorite. And, um, you know, this guy's the real deal, man. And he, he could be fighting at light heavyweight if he wanted. You know, he looked unstoppable in both weight classes. Uh, seven knockouts and 12 submissions. Um, all of his wins have been by finish. You know, really good wrestling and submissions. Probably the best in the heavyweight division, man. And I, I don't have a problem saying that. Aside from maybe John Jones, but we'll hopefully we'll see that one day, but probably not. I'm sure Jones is going to retire before Almeida makes it to the shot. But, um, you know, he ragdolls these huge guys, man. And, and once he has them down, they're screwed. They can't get back up. 
you know, he always has the speed advantage. And I, I can't say enough good things about this guy, man. He's, 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 you know, seriously a, a very talented fighter, man. He has great conditioning, man. He, he always makes it look easy. He's probably a future champion. Uh, striking's good. Wrestling's good all the way around. And uh, he's taking on Derek Lewis. He is 38 years old, 6'3", with a 79-inch reach. These guys have the same reach. Um, 27 and 11 and 18 and nine in the UFC. And he's a plus 385 underdog. And I'm a big Lewis fan, man. One of my favorite fighters, nasty power, good boxing. Um, but this is a bad matchup for him, man. And, and I wish he hadn't taken this fight. You know, we've seen him taken down by guys that are nowhere near as good as Jelton Almeida, you know, Sergey Spivak. Um, so I don't think he's going to get the win here. Um, he does have big power. He has 22 wins by knockout. He always has a chance to land a big shot, but, uh, and I wouldn't be mad if he did, man. Well, I guess I would. I might have some money on, you know, Almeida. But, um, you know, Almeida has almost 70% takedown accuracy. He lands over six takedowns per 15 minutes. Um, lands almost four strikes per minute. And all signs here point to Jelton Almeida to get the win. So, I'm, uh, you know, the question is, is what round? You know, I, I don't think that uh, maybe Derek survives the first round and, and Almeida gets the submission in round two or finishes via ground and pound. But I'm going to go with submission round two. So. So yeah, man, that's all my all my picks, guys. And um, hopefully this better uh, this video is better than the last one. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, so that's my picks. And as far as my bets go, um, pull this up. Okay, so as far as my um, single plays and two fight parlay, I've got a, a small play on uh, Esteban Ribovics. It's a half unit at plus one sixty. I've got a one-unit play on Armin Petrosian at minus 120. I have a two-unit play on Renat Fakhradinov at minus 250. And then I have a another two-unit play on Gabriel Bonfin and uh, Jolson Almeida. It's a minus 170 parlay, and it's a, a two-unit play, um, like I said. So there's that, man. Leave that up for a second. I mean, I know y'all heard it, but in case y'all need a better look. <clears throat> so as far as my parlays go, Get down here and move to those. So, first parlay is a five fight parlay. Um, Jalton Almeida, Eduardo Mora, Armin Petrosian, Gabriel Bonfren, and Renat Fakhradinov. That's plus three eighty two. Um, that's terrible odds for a five fight parlay, but you know whatever. Um, and then to that, I had all the same ones. That's how I do it. You know, I just add to the I add to the parlay as I'm going. So. All the same ones, and I added um, I added Nascimento and Petrino, and that's a plus 865. That's a seven-fight parlay. Keep that up for a second. And let's see here, the next one, this one. Um, and then to that, um, I added... Uh, Esteban Ribovics and Ismail Bonfin. So that's a 9 5 parlay, and that's a plus 2,788. And then to that, I added. Um, and to that, I added David Onama and Kyle Fernandez. Um, that's a 10 5 parlay, that's plus 7,121. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got, man, as far as I don't have a, I think there's a couple fights that I had left out or whatever that I wasn't super confident in the Angela Hill fight I left out. Um, but yeah, man. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's it for me guys, man. I really appreciate all you so much. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for caring what I have to say. Um, please like, and subscribe, man. It'll help me out a lot. And, uh, I guess that's it, man. Well, let me check and make sure there wasn't any more changes to the, uh, any more changes to this weekend's card, you know? We'll look at it real quick. Just to make sure in case there's anything I need to go over on this card, so. We went over that one, that one, that one. Went over that one. Looks like there haven't been any changes to this one, so. I got it all already, man. Yeah, I guess that's uh, that's it for me, guys, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good one, man. I'm out of here.